Okay, so you just saw the end of the Assassin's Creed Revelations playthrough. And, uh, wow, a lot of stuff happening, obviously. We get pretty much an end to Altair's story for sure. We know, you know, we know what happened to him. And basically, we know what happens to Ezio. He basically retires from being an assassin, gives it up, and, uh, you know, presumably goes on to live a life with, uh, with, with, uh, Sophia. And, uh, of course, now we know that the next game will be in the present. Or we assume that it's going to be in the present with Desmond actually being the assassin. Um, even though we don't exactly know what, what's going on, we know that we have to get to this place that the people who came before, who we still don't really know who they are, um, where they hid what I think is, is what they said is a way to, for salvation. Um, and we need to get there and find out what they locked in there, what they hid in there, whatever. To find out how to save the Earth from suffering the same fate it did back then. Which obviously was a giant solar flare and destroyed all the Earth and killed everyone on it. And we need to save it. Um, so, that's it for Ezio. Uh, after three games, it's a little difficult to let him go. You know, you got really attached to the character of Ezio and you got to learn a lot about him. And I think... Honestly, I think in this game, um, oh, it's reconstructing the island. I think in this game, it kind of, you know, you got more personal with Ezio than you did in the past two. At least I felt that way. Um, you got to see some sides of Ezio in this game that maybe you didn't get to see in previous games. Um, you know, you got to see him fall in love. Um, you know, we got to we got to see his, his you know him develop some very good friends. Uh, not that we didn't see that before, you know, with Leonardo and everything, but um, I just felt a lot closer, I think, to Ezio in this game than I did in previous Assassin's Creeds. Um, and if you want my opinion, plot-wise, I think the plot of this game, Revelations, is actually the best one yet. I have to say, I honestly think that um, it was a pounding plot. And there was a lot of different plots going on, you know, with the Masyaf keys and then with, uh, you know, the, the deal with the Byzantines and, and the fighting for the Sultan's throne and, uh, you know, the, the ongoing thing with Sophia. I thought it was really good. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the new location a lot. Um, and... I, overall, I have to say, I really, I really enjoyed this game a, a, a hell of a lot more than I thought I was going to. You know, I, like I said, I didn't actually complete Assassin's Creed Brotherhood because it, it, to me it felt way too much like Assassin's Creed 2. Um, so I didn't think I was going to like this game very much, but I did. I, I really did. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now... I think it's time. I think it's time that they wrap up the story of Ezio. I don't necessarily know if they needed two games. You know what I mean? I don't know if Brotherhood um, was necessarily even needed. Uh, one thing they didn't do in this game is they didn't explain the end of Brotherhood. Why I stabbed Lucy and killed her. I have no idea they didn't explain that in this game. Um, so I wonder, that. I mean that's a big plot hole that they just didn't fill. So I'm wondering if they're going to explain it in the next game, or if they're just going to forget about it and leave this gaping plot hole as to why I stabbed and killed Lucy. Um, you know, I don't know. Or maybe they reveal that in those Desmond memories that I just didn't do because I hated the gameplay. But you could tell in this game that, you know, they were kind of uh, really stretching here to find new gameplay elements. Um, and they just started putting things in the game that had nothing to do with Assassin's Creed, like the tower defense games, which I didn't mind. Um, I didn't hate them, as I know a lot of people do, but I didn't mind them. Um, the gameplay of the Desmond memories I thought was, was really bad. Uh, the first person platforming, I don't know why that would be in the game, you know. Um, it really <laughs> wasn't good to me. I didn't enjoy that at all, and I didn't even do the missions because of it. Um, the bombs... It was really, really intense, really in-depth with the bomb making, but really how much do you need them? 
you know, I mean, sure I use them for a couple of things, and sure they make some things, uh, easier, you know what I mean, but overall, are they really necessary? No, they're not, and, you know, you really, um, they really just over, overburden you with the bombs and with the bomb ingredients and all that kind of stuff, and it's not really necessarily necessary. Uh, they do make some things easier, but, you know, they don't play as big a part in this game as I think the game developers intended it to. Um, you know, the, the, the sending the assassins out and all was, was fun. They had that in Brotherhood. Of course, when you think about it, it's not, there's not a huge benefit to doing it. I mean, there, are, there is a benefit. Obviously, you can call them in the fight for you, which I didn't have to do that many times. And the higher talent they are, the better fighters they are, and obviously. And then you can assign them to the dens to stop the Templars from attacking. But overall, I think the, the greatest purpose it served was probably just getting the money for doing the missions. You know what I mean? Um, but no, overall, I, I actually i am very impressed with the game. I am. Uh, there's still some problems, like the controls still, the controls still suffer from the same problems that they suffered from in Assassin's Creed 1. I mean, the controls aren't bad, per se, they're not horrible, but they're a little, uh, choppy, you know what I mean? They're not, there are some parts, like some of the towers that I was running through, where the controls seemed really fluid, but there was also a good amount of parts where it wasn't, and, you know, I was, I would fly off of buildings, fly off of roof, rooftops, you know, when uh, I didn't mean to do it, and uh, it was frustrating. Uh, it was buggy some of the time, like some of the missions were bugged, you know, um, like that mission where I was supposed to be tailing that guy, and he kept leaving and then turning around and tailing, you know, backtracking and catching me, um, and the game kept, kept pushing me up in the mission, just kept giving me the benefit of the doubt. Um, so some of the things are a little buggy, but, uh, you know, other than that, I thought it was a really good game. And there's still more. There's, there's still uh, multiplayer to play, which the multiplayer Brotherhood was pretty good. And so I'm excited to see the changes that they've made to Revelations multiplayer. I'm excited to, to try it out and see, you know, what they've done with it. I will be trying out... Uh, a bunch of the modes at some point, probably in a couple of days. Um, I'll be trying that out and then obviously putting out my review. Do some long credits, by the way. But, you know, thought it was good. I liked the flashbacks to Altair. I thought that was really good. One of my favorite games of the year, I have to say. Surprisingly so, but it, it was. It was one of my favorite games of 2011. The Assassin's Creed de Brand. Of course, as usual with Assassin's Creed games, it leaves you with more questions than answers. They're certainly going to have a lot of questions to answer in the final Assassin's Creed, which may in fact be the next one, Assassin's Creed 3. Um, or whatever they decide to call it, because I mean, really, this this one was the fourth Assassin's Creed, the next one will be the fifth one, so it'll be a little weird to call it Assassin's Creed 3 when it's the fifth game, but whatever they call it. Um... Could potentially be the last one, you know, just considering what, you know, now knowing what we have to do, looks like the ultimate goal. Um, so the next one, yeah, I mean, there's probably will be some, you know, ancestor. Text box is dimming itself. There probably will be another ancestor we go back and visit, but it's not going to be Ezio and it's not going to be Altair. It's going to be somebody completely different. Um, and there'll probably be a lot going on in the present day with Ed, with uh, Desmond. I'd have to figure, you know. Hopefully they do understand what happened with Lucy at the end of Brotherhood, because 
I really would like to know. Come on, man. How long are these credits? It's crazy. Ugh, come on. Any day now. Martin Asnong, Cyril Bordat. There's some names in this, in these credits, huh? Julien Lehero, Lehero. Raphael Saint Pierre. I Ionut Calasian. Good lord. <laughs> oh my god, how many people worked on this game? By the way. For this game only being made in one year, I'm really surprised and, you know, pleasantly that the game was so good. But, uh, as I said about, you know, them, uh, basically going out on a limb to get some new gameplay elements, that's a result of them making too many games, you know what I mean? If they had put two years into making one game, you know, that was this good, and just maybe a little longer, you know? Since Brotherhood didn't have a whole ton of plot development for Desmond. Um, it was more about Ezio and more about finding the Borgias, which he already had done in Assassin's Creed 2. If they had just, you know, maybe put the, the ending of Assassin's Creed 2 or something like that. Or, I'm sorry, the ending of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood at the start of Revelations. And gone from there, then I, think, I don't think anybody would have been complaining. And I think everybody would have been saying Game of the Year. Honestly. Because you would have had all the new additions, and you would have had the, the multiplayer making its debut into the series. And if the campaign was this good, and you know, had debut, debuted all of that stuff, man, it would have been uh, definitely a contestant for Game of the Year. But they, I think they made one too many games with Brotherhood. I think this is the game that they should have made all along, you know what I mean? Ubisoft Quebec, come on, man. Already 12 and a half minutes of credits. I started this, this new video when the credits started rolling. It's been 12 and a half minutes. Scenario director, gameplay engineering, and entertainment analysis director. There's all kinds of different positions at Ubisoft. They're in the W's now, so we're probably, hopefully, coming up on the end of the credits. Well, I thought they were in alphabetical order, the categories, but they're not, so never mind. Come on, man. How long are these credits? Good lord. Francois Deneau. Uh, this year, please. So I never did retake the final Templar den. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Oh look, we're just now getting into Ubisoft North America. Trisha Alcock, that's a heck of a last name for you. Alcock. <laughs> oh my god. Can't skip this either. Oh yes you can, just hit start. Oh no, it just pauses the credits. It pauses the credits. You can't skip them. Nope. Who, <laughs> who's ever heard of pausing the credits? Wilfried. Nobody cares about the production babies. 
Adobe Flash Player, if you say so. I have no idea what part of this game was had Adobe Flash. Bink Video. Alright, we're rolling the logos here, so... Probably coming up on the end. Dolby, face effects, a bunch of Getty images. Havoc Engine. Havoc Engine, which is always infamous for, for having frame rate problems from time to time. I've always found that with every game with the Havoc Engine, uh, the frame rates always suffer at some point in the game, and they did in this game. Okay, so that's it. And now I can walk around as Desmond, I can go back to uh, Constantinople if I want and do anything that I didn't do. But obviously, I can go back and do the Desmond memories, which I'm not going to do. So, since I'm not a completionist and since there aren't any trophies, because I looked, for 100% of the city or getting on the Templar Gen, there's no achievements like that. Um, then I think I'm done. I just want to see the achievements I did get for the game. I got 13 of 53, not much at all. DNA sequence 9, 8, 7, 6, uh, assassinate 50 guards with a hidden blade. Desmond sequence 2, Desmond sequence 1, DNA sequence 5, 4, 3, 1 trainee reach the rank of master assassin, 2, and 1. That's it. A bunch of these are multiplayer because I looked. All the other Desmond sequences I didn't do. Find and beat up Duccio. But yeah, see none of these are get all of the city. Uh, a lot of these are, are complete the missions and multiplayers. So, alright. That's it for the single player of Assassin's Creed Revelations. Hope you enjoyed. Definitely come back to check out footage of multiplayer, and then uh, be sure to check out my official review for the game, and I hope to see everybody there.